This knife, it's called a bunka. What is it? Well, it's this. It's a really great all-purpose size kitchen knife. It's a little on the shorter end, but it's nice and tall. It, you know what? It's a lot like a santoku. A santoku is a cherished knife in many kitchens as the knife that cuts the food for dinner all of the time. This is a kiritsuki, and this is where that cool attitude comes from, is that cut off tip of the knife. Now, you put that together and we get this kiritsuki santoku, or sometimes called a hakata, but in our case, we call this a bunka. Today, I'm gonna show you how to use this bunka. Same as most every other knife, when you're holding it, you're gonna wanna pinch just above the heel of the blade and then wrap the rest of your fingers around the back end of the handle. That's it, that's all you gotta do. You're gonna hold it nice and comfortably here. The knife can pivot in your grip without having to use a whole bunch of force. Now, your other hand, the one that is in danger most of the time, you make a little claw with this guy. And what you're gonna do when you get this little claw is you're gonna take these four digits out of the danger zone and you're really gonna be just sacrificing this guy in the middle. So when I'm cutting, I've got my knife in my right hand with my pinch grip, I've got my claw holding down this carrot, and then I'm just gonna slide the knife forwards. I don't have to use a lot of force because I'm sliding the knife and that's gonna do the cutting for me, as opposed to just pushing the knife through. I find the sliding has a real benefit too, is it, it cuts all the way through the food. You don't end up with that accordion effect of the food that's almost cut, but still kind of together. If I'm trying to make a really fine cut, I'll actually put that knuckle of my middle finger up against the back of the knife and the two push against each other to give me the exact distance that I want to be cutting at. That way I can see what I'm doing and I can get nice even slices. As you can see, the size of this knife is really perfect for all kinds of stuff. If you're gonna cut a lot of stuff at one time, maybe you're gonna look for a bigger knife, but I think for most days, most cooking, most food, this knife is awesome size, awesome shape. Okay, let's get into a few different cuts that you can do with a bunka. Let's start with a julienne, which is a nice, tiny little thin stick. So I, I'm gonna cut a flat spot here, so I'm gonna roll that round carrot now onto a flat spot. It's gonna be more stable, and I'm gonna have more control as I'm cutting. As I cut, I'm just gonna aim the tip towards the cutting board, and then I slide the knife forwards. Now that first little curve under the edge of the tip hits the cutting board. Now I do my follow through where I let my hand drop down towards the cutting board, and I just roll the knife through. That nice little curve allows me to rock the knife as I'm chopping stuff, but as I'm cutting through something straight like this, I'm going to try and follow through and roll the heel down a bit too. That way I can cut all the way through the food. When you get to the end of your carrot and it's too tall to stand upright, you don't have to sacrifice your fingers. You can just flop it over and then do the rest of it. Now, to finish off this julienne, if I'm gonna do it in a little bit more casual way, I just lay them flat on a cutting board like this and sort of shingle them. And then I just run over it. I'm not gonna end up with the most even julienne, but it will serve that purpose. And if I'm just cooking dinner at home for the family, uh, they're not paying me too much, so I don't need to worry about that perfection. Now, if you're working at a restaurant, you're often gonna take each one of those stacks, pile them up perfectly, get rid of any of the odd bits that didn't get cut perfectly to start with, and you're really gonna high grade the cut so you end up with that perfection. So to cut through this, pile of carrots. I'm gonna start by aiming the tip down towards the surface of the cutting board, and then I'm gonna roll the knife through as I do that cutting motion. So I pick the knife up, put it on top of the pile, slide the knife away from me, and then start applying some pressure. As that curved tip of the knife hits the cutting board, I keep sliding the knife forwards, but I lower my hand. As I lower my hand, the knife rolls through and does this great rocking motion, cutting all the way through the food. And, and using most of the edge of the knife is gonna get you the smoothest cut. And it's also gonna keep your knife sharp for a longer time. This nice curve allows you to get a real fluid rocking motion going. Say you're cutting something like green onions and you wanna move a little bit quicker. Same thing, I'm just picking the knife up, rolling it back on that curve on the tip, and then following the knife through. 
What you don't really want to be doing with a knife like this is just pushing it down at that curve and then twisting the knife so you can detach the food and scrape it across your cutting board. That's not really knife friendly. It's not really food friendly either. I mean, you bought the whole knife, you should use the whole knife. So that sliding motion does exactly what you want it to, cutting all the way through the food. This shove, I mean, I don't really cut all the way through because that curved part didn't go all the way down to the cutting board. So now I do this weird thing and I do the twist and scrape. That's a technique you wanna avoid. Again, long, smooth, rolling, fluid motion. One thing to be cautious of is when you pick the knife up and leave the tip on a cutting board. This motion does work. It works a little better than just shoving, but one of the problems I have is now the knife edge comes up above my hand, which means I'm at much more risk of cutting myself. So what's better is to pick the knife up while keeping it parallel to the cutting surface, put it on top of the food, then slide the knife through down to the cutting board, following that rock with the curve of the edge of the knife. One of the benefits of this bunka shape is this fine little tip you've got here when you're trying to do fine little bits of work. Say I'm trying to finely slice this onion so I can do a really fine brunoise. It just floats right through the onion without any resistance. It gives me a lot of control so I can get really close cuts making really nice and thin slices. So I've done the first half of brunoising or finely chopping an onion. I'm gonna put a little horizontal cut in here too and that'll keep my slices or my dices nice and nice and fine. When I'm gonna do the rest of the cutting of this onion though, I'm gonna pick the knife up and push it down towards the cutting board following that curve of the edge. What I'm going to avoid doing is picking it up and doing this big paper cutter movement. I don't really like that. And that's because when I pull this knife up, it's gotta come above my hand. That means I'm much higher risk of cutting myself, which is why I really don't like that paper cutter kind of motion. That sliding motion that you get works really well and my fingers are at less risk of being cut. Now, sometimes you're gonna be cutting and you're just gonna be picking the knife up and putting it down. It, well, frankly, a little bit of a sliding motion helps you in that too. Something like a mushroom, you can just pick it up and put it down, but it's gonna slide just a little bit more if you pull it back as you do that sliding motion. With that curve here on the tip of the blade, you can run into that problem where you don't cut all the way through. So I find working a little bit further towards the heel of the knife. And if you feel like you need to move your hand back, you're, you can totally move your hand back on the handle and just pick it up and drop it while just giving the knife just a little bit of a tug backwards. Now let's talk about how you cut something that's really delicate and fine, something like a soft herb like mint. I, I like to just pluck the little leaves off here and you can take a bunch of them and you, you pick them off the stems and then you stack them up on top of each other. So I take this little pile and I can roll it back on itself here to make this little tiny bundle. Now a knife like this, it's a, it's a great size for this job. I don't need much more than this. And this is a nice thin blade. So I can just make these tiny fine little slices and you just get this beautifully shaved fresh herb. And you know what the benefit about this is, is that I'm not bashing this herb so much. When you take your knife and you go and chop 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 and chop, you're actually mulching that herb up a bit. You're gonna oxidize all the flavors and it's gonna smell great as you're doing it, but guess what? All of that smells leaving and you're gonna put it in your food and it's gonna taste like something that came out of the back of a lawnmower. Don't power through and chop your herbs. Just make your first cuts really fine and then you end up with a perfect little product and all that flavor ends up in your food. Now, let's just say this is some good old parsley. It's a little bit more robust and maybe you do want to do that chopping motion anyway. You don't care what I think. That's fine with me, but when you do it, don't apply a lot of force on that tip of the knife and then twist the edge. It's not gonna be great for the edge of the knife and it's not doing any favors. What I like to do is you think about it like this. Well, it's gonna, you know, look at this, knife's bouncing everywhere. So I just put my hand just to sort of calm that bouncing down. And then you can just roll back and forth over it. 
Ta-da. You can use a bunker every day, all day. Sometimes you're gonna want a bigger knife for bigger jobs or cutting for a really long time. But a bunker is gonna perform all of the same jobs as a Santoku would, just you got a different look. I think it's awesome. I think it's just got a little bit more attitude. If you're looking for a knife, to use on a daily basis for pretty much everything that you could cut, a bunk is gonna do the job for you. As you can see, you can cut all kinds of different stuff with it. Uh, it's a great addition to your collection. If you liked my video here today on knife skills and how to use a bunker, please check out my other videos for all the other shapes of knives. If there's a video that we haven't done that you'd like to see, let us know, we can make it happen. Goodbye, Mr. Bond.